Every Genshin Impact player has their own favorite character. This guy's favorite is Raiden Shogun, this guy's favorite is Zhongli, and this guy's favorite is Tainari. Mine, you may ask? <laughs> Batman. But nowadays, d -Luke is treated way too poorly by the fandom, and I'd like to change that. I'm going to prove that d -Luke is still useful in 3.4 by beating the entirety of Genshin Impact using only d -Luke. Here are the rules. I can only use d -Luke in battle. Any puzzles that require another element or weapon can be completed with another character. No co-op while fighting enemies, and all claymores are allowed. So if I pull the wolf's gravestone, I can use it. But like, that's ever gonna happen. What are the odds of me getting a 5-star on Weapon Vendor and it being Wolf's Gravestone? Now let's see if you can beat the entirety of Genshin Impact's main arc on quest line using only d -Luke. We start our journey by wishing and getting d -Luke. Sadly, I don't have this footage, but here's the recreation of it playing in the background. Actually, now that I think about it, it doesn't matter. All the footage from Monster looks like shit. Here, just look for yourself. I think that the game was too demanding, so OBS couldn't really record it properly. All the other footage looks presentable enough, but for Mondstadt, which was all done in one day, I'm going to have to recreate it all. Get ready for Photoshop Mondstadt, everybody. We're, we go to Amber's domain and clear it without any problems. Next was Kaya's domain, which we could easily clear. We just walked through the fire and jumped over the water. Finally, it was Lisa's domain, which we just glided through with no problems. With those three temples complete, we now have to grind to AR-10 to continue with the Archon quests. Doing Adventure Handbook challenges are easy way of getting AR early. I grinded some Adventure Handbook challenges and before long we were AR-10 and we can continue on with the Archon quest line. We get promoted to Honorary Knight, Oh boy, now people know what I'm not! And we go to the big tree to fight an Eye of the Storm. It wasn't that bad because d -Luke hits really hard. After that we steal the Lyre from the Cathedral for Venti using some STEALTH. When we escape, we go to the tavern to meet our main character for the second time. Now we have to go to three different places to get three different teardrop crystals. First we have to fight a ruin guard, which took a while, but it was really easy. Next I did the domain to get the teardrop crystal, and at the end was a pyro abyss mage. But I smartened up from last time, and I realized you can get rid of their shields using the water. Next we storm a hilly troll camp and raided their chest with the teardrop crystal. Now Venti can play his music at Star Snatch Cliff. Because that didn't work, we have to grind to AR-18 to be able to continue the Archon quest line. Yeah! But there was something good to come out of this AR grind. During one of our wishes, we got a Favonius Greatsword, which is a great weapon to have on d for early game. It also allows you to spam burst, which is fun! After 4 hours and 40 minutes, we can finally start the final Archon quest for Mondstadt. We clear out the monsters at the front of the path to Storm Terror's lair and we go in. We activate the four light actuators with no problems and we were finally able to fight the Valen. And we crushed him! HA! Suck it you overgrown chicken! With the Valen defeated and Senora dominating Venti, we are done with Mondstadt. Now we have to grind to AR-23 to be able to continue on to Liwei's Archon quest line. They give you both Diluc's story quest and Razor's story quest to complete, so it's not that bad of a grind. Also, once you complete Razor's story quest, you can fight the Wolf of the North which gives you 300 adventure rank experience. Before long I was at AR 23 and I can continue on to the first Leeway Archon quest. Daddy Geo dies and we have to inform the Adept Eye for Child, but for some reason we have to do stuff for them before we can actually tell them. So we do that and tell all of them that Daddy died. Nothing was difficult, not even the Ruin Hunter. Now to continue we have to get to AR 25, but we're already at AR 25 so we can just automatically do the next Archon quest. I'll be skipping the dialogue parts because it's not really necessary to cover. At the pot where you eat up the Noctilucus Jade, we have to fight some hilly churls who all went down very easily. We were able to heat up the pot because it only requires Pyro and we are playing as Captain Pyro. Next we have to get the bell from the gilf inside of her teapot. Side note, why are there spiders in this game? They serve no purpose except to be annoying. They barely do any damage and they just slow you down. Either way, it was an easy domain. Later, Chi Chi tells us that we have to go to the Guizhong Ballista to hunt down a cocoa goat, but all we run into are some virgins who get killed by Chad D. Luke. 
After collecting everything that Zhang Li needed, we go to have a date with him. Finally, my fantasies of Zhang Li are coming true. Oh wait, never mind, because Ganyu decided to show up. My apologies. And that's the end of that Archon quest. Now we have to get to AR28 so we can continue on with the Archon quest line. Oh god damn it! This is always my least favorite AR grind to do. There's so little quests to do and you've already cleared a lot of the other things you could do for AR, so you just have to do commissions and it's so slow. Luckily in this playthrough I didn't do a lot of the adventure handbook challenges for some reason, so I was just able to clear those really fast to get to AR28. And by really fast I mean I took like a 3 week break. At some point in this AR grind as well we got Prototype Archaic, which was a vast improvement over Favonius Greatsword. Now that we are AR28 we can finally finish Liwe. We make it to the Animo mechanism in the mountains, but we can't trigger it, so we just have to use Animo Diluc, otherwise known as Diluc. Now we can go to the Jade Chamber for like a minute and then go straight back to Diluc's boyfriend. We sing to the flowers. We drown them because Diluc is built different. Now we can go back to Liwe and realize that child is a dick. We go off to confront him and now he wants to fight. And now we realize Child's specialty, attacking people when they're not long range. Unlike my last two Genshin Impact challenges, I could attack at range using Diona and Guoba. Now I don't have any way of attacking him at range, so he can just wail attacks on me. Not in that way. But even then, he wasn't able to get a lot of hits on me, and we were quickly able to take him down because he was strong muscles. Child then summons a god, and now we have to take that down. With the power of Madame Ping, Ganyu, and Zhao, we could just triple tap every Fatui member. With that and Diluc's boyfriend trading away his Gnosis, we are finally done with Liyue. We have to get to AR30 to be able to start the Inazuma Archon quest line, but that's not going to be horrible. We have three other quests to do that gets us a lot of AR. First we do Bogkeeper Dane's Leaf, which was no problem whatsoever. Not even the Pyro Abyss Mages were a problem anymore. Next was We Will Be Reunited and it also didn't pose any sort of a problem. Even the room with the Abyss Lector, a Pyro Abyss Mage, and a Hydro Abyss Mage wasn't that bad. Diluc is mowing through this challenge. Finally was Jade Chamber Rising, and this one also was easy. Not even the Geo Bishops had a chance against Diluc. You know what? For this amazing performance from Diluc, I'm gonna reward him. But what way could I ever reward him? Perfect. With those quests complete, we are at AR30 and we can start Inazuma. First we have to stab people multiple times in a tournament and then kill some more virgins. Now that we're done with that very descriptive and in-depth review of that quest, we can set sail for Inazuma. First we have to run around to Rito for a few minutes and then we can actually do some interesting stuff. First we did the transport mission, which we went along without a hitch, and now we are free to explore all of Inazuma. First, we have to talk to a few people who lost their visions, but the only one that matters is the one that actually has some combat in it. It was just three virgins who were put in their place. Then we have to break somebody out of jail, and while doing that, we have to fight a bunch of Tenryo Commission soldiers, but it went really easily. And that basically the first Darkon quest is complete. But now we have to complete Ayaka's and Yoimiya's story quest. But who cares about those when they're not mainline quests? Act 2 starts with us realizing that Tomo's vision is about to get taken away, so to prevent that, we have to fight the Raiden Shogun. And honestly, she was easy. All of her attacks at this AR don't really do that much damage, and she's very slow in between attacks. Despite Diluc destroying her overall, we still lose. So now we have to go to another island to join up with the Resistance. The Resistance has such colorful characters such as the Doggy General, Beta Sichong, and me. First thing we have to do at the Resistance camp is the archery demonstration, which we can't do. So instead, we use Bo Diluc. Next, we have to go to the front line to defeat the Shogun's warriors whom we charge attack into submission. Now that's Act 2 complete. Act 3 starts with us taking out some Ronin bordering Watatsumi Island. Since they were all by the water, I could use Vaporize on them for an easy victory. Next we have to trigger three elemental monuments that require Electro, which we aren't. So we have to use Purple Diluc to trigger the monuments and take out the Electro Lao that shows up. After that, Beta Z Chung dies and we go off to the clock tower from Super Mario 3D Land. Now normally all the Fatui members in their different elemented shields would cause a lot of problems, but not for Diluc. Diluc destroyed everybody in this domain. The only one that caused a little bit of problems was the Electra Hammer guy, but even then he never really hit me. 
At the end of the domain, we met Scaramouche. Taco Bell's five buck box has a burrito supreme, crunchy taco, a baking club chalupa, and a medium drink. Hey, you sleep when I say you can sleep. Next, we have to do the anti ride and shogun training, which we clear on our second try. Ah! Round two of shogun training was even easier than the first round, and then we get evidence towards the Tenryo Commission's dealings with the Vitui. We go to the Tenryo Commission and we obliterate every member. Now we have to do my biggest fear of this entire playthrough Senora. I was worried that during the pyro phase, she would be way too tanky and we would just end up dying. But after I defeated her, I could say with 100% confidence that D. Luke struggles with nothing from Mondstadt onwards. Senora was destroyed by D. Luke, even in the pyro phase. Raiden Shogun kills Senora, and now we have to fight A. And as you learned from our last fight with her, you would know that this fight is underwhelming. Even before you get your buff, it's still pretty easy because she attacks so slow. And then after you get your buff, you can just wail on her. Before long, she's defeated, and Inazuma is over. We have to get to AR-35 to be able to start the Sumeru Archon quest line, but we also have to complete the next Dainsleaf quest. That requires us to unlock the Chasm, so that means we have to complete the Chasm world quest, which I'm not going to go over because if there's no audio, it doesn't matter. The Dainsleaf quest was overall not that bad, the only real annoyances were the Pyro Abyss Mage near the end of the quest. Now back to the good we make it to Sumeru when we pass her from too much Zaza. We get taken in by Kale and Tainari. Kale! Quickly, could you hold my balls real quick? Mr. Tainari, what the fuck? And later we have to clear out a withering zone with Tainari. Then we have to brave the Zaza to get some food to Apasia, but the Zaza gets to us again and we are transported to a place that, honestly, I have no idea why is in the game. Basically all that was there was just a bunch of mushrooms that we killed. At the end is an abyss hero that isn't killable. We get transported out of there and we give the food to Apasia. With that we are done at Gundarbaville and we can go to Samaria City. All of our time spent at Sumeru City is just us looking for a way to talk to Lesser Lord Kusanali, which is not really that important. So let's just skip to where we go to Port Ormos. We meet with Al Haytham, who needs us to get some knowledge capsules from the best Sumeru character, Dory. We buy the knowledge capsules from Dory for Al Haytham. We also buy a knowledge capsule for sword fighting, which we test out on some unsuspecting fungi. It didn't increase our power at all, which means we just got Doried. We fight some Aramites by the dock, and that's the end of Act 1. Next we have to do Act 2, which if any of you guys have played this, you know it's just a lore Archon quest. There's literally only one instance of combat during the entire quest, so we're just going to skip to that. It's just a bunch of Aramites that we take out with no problems. We dedicate this to our god. The dance of Italy. The dance of Italy. Ho ho ho. The dance of Italy. Ho ho ho. First thing we have to do is guilt Triple Woman into giving us the information we need about the Samsara that caused us to play Act 2 for over an hour and a half. We managed to do that, but we weren't able to get the information we needed because of... The Doctor. That's probably one of my favorite line deliveries in the entire game. Now we have to go to the Gondarvaville to get Tainari's help, but we were ambushed by some Aramites. who were taken out with the power of... <coughs> we make it there, but we're only greeted by Kale. She tells us that Tainari is at Party City, so we go off to Party City. We learn about Scaramouche's backstory and Nahida gets snabbed. We meet with Tainari, but then we quickly abandon him and go to Caravan Ribat. We meet back up with the al them and we both go into the desert. We get attacked by Sino and get instructed to go inside. After a little bit, we go outside and fight the Rift Hounds, which, side note, are some of the most annoying enemies in the entire game. They weren't that bad because there were only four small ones. With that, Act 3 is over. Act 4 starts with us fighting the Radicals. They were all really easy because they were just Aramites. After that we go to the Elrzar Hospital with Al Haytham. At the entrance there were some Hilly Churls, a Mida Churl and a Lao Churl. I was concerned about them but it ended up not being that bad because the Lao Churl was Geo and we could easily knock down its Geo shield with Deluxe Claymore. Al Haytham activates one of the Dendro Pillars but he leaves us to do the other three. Gee, thanks! But that's not a problem because we have Green Deluke. Now we can go inside and see a man seven from too much Zaza or something. Now we have to go to the mausoleum of King Deshret. During my first two places of this part of the quest, I didn't know you could just walk by some of the enemies, which made this domain a lot faster. We completed that domain in not that much time, and we're done with Act 4. Finally is Act 5. We started by arresting Ramen's group to get them into Sumer City. 
I found it funny how much more damage I was doing than the bots. Next we go to Party City to fight the Fatui. I just realized how weird it is that you go through this entire quest and this is the first instance of fighting the Fatui. After that we check on Hypatia and meet with Scaramouche. He says we cannot defeat a bona fide god like me and summons lightning to strike down Elliot Gindy. After a lot of plot we finally get to do some more stuff and by that I mean we get to suffer in the Deus Foundry. This is one of the slowest domains to do in a solo playthrough. Not only is the domain itself pretty long, but it's filled with Fatui members like the Hydro guy and the Electro guy. Luckily I didn't have to fight the Pyro guy because I just made him fall off the map. But we're completed that domain and we're going to fight Scaramouche. And I have to admit something. During this fight, I didn't only use D-Loop. I did deal all the direct damage with D-Loop onto Scaramouche, but against the robot things that charge up Scaramouche's one-shot move, I didn't just use d -Luke. You can use d -Luke's burst to destroy all of them really quickly, but if you're too close to one, d -Luke will aim for that one and miss the one in the process. That happened here, so I used Nahida's charge attack to knock down the last one. Technically it wasn't a direct damage to Scaramouche, and I still would have won if I didn't do that, but I still feel guilty for doing that. I need a punishment, but I don't know what to do as a punishment right now. Post your recommendations for a punishment in the comments and I might do it. Either way, we were able to defeat Scaramouche pretty easily. Now there's only one final challenge for us, the polluted part of Ermansoul. None of the enemies that led up to the boat really were that hard, except for some rift hounds, which were very tanky and annoying. On the boat, we just found some Hilitroth and Electro Lalatro. We quickly defeated them, and we saved Ermansoul. And with that, the challenge is over, and I beat all of Genshin Impact's main Archon quests with only d -Luke. My main takeaway from this challenge was that it was a lot easier than other playthrough challenges that I've done in Genshin Impact. This was really just a challenge I did to prove that Diluc is still a good character. That and Diluc is mighty fine and scrumdiddly umptious. Next challenge will be another difficult challenge though. Physical damage only. But until then, I'll leave you with that.